Hey friends, I'm popping in for a quickie of sorts. I want to bring you another preview of one of my favorite podcasts that I think you're gonna dig. It's called Sluts and Scholars. It's another show from the Pleasure Podcast Network. Now, Sluts and Scholars is a weekly educational podcast for professionals who like pleasure with a mission to reclaim the word slut, host Nicoletta Heidegger, a licensed marriage and family therapist and sexologist, interviews diverse professionals about desire, pleasure, shame, gender, relationships, and body functions with guests like Joanna Angel, Dita Von Teis, and Alok Vad Menon. Sluts and Scholars has over 200 episodes featuring top sex educators, therapists, best-selling authors, actors, researchers, doctors, sex workers, sex tech designers, parents, and more. There's something for anyone who wants to expand their sexual knowledge and pleasure potential. In this preview from one of Sluts and Scholars' top episodes, strap in for some strap-on information with sex and pleasure educator Luna Matadas. Nicoletta and Luna talk about pegging, anal play, and why it's so hard just to receive pleasure. Okay, here's the teaser clip. We hope you enjoy it as much as we did. And you can hear the full episode and more from Sluts and Scholars wherever you get your podcasts or at slutsandscholars.com. Yeah. So yeah, definitely want to encourage erotic creativity, except when it comes to sticking things up your butt, because there's only specific things that can go up your butt, but otherwise get creative. Um, so let's talk about sticking things up your butt. Um, so strap on play. Uh, we, we use the word pegging, but strap on play can look different than just how you described it. So what kinds of strap on play are available and why, why do it? Yeah. Um, Strap-on play is also super creative. There's so many different kinds of harnesses, whether you want to wear your strap-on on on your pelvis or on your thigh or on your hand. Um, Some people are taking on strap-on play to act as if they they have a cock. They want to embody that energy of uh, phallic energy. Um, It might be a masculine energy. It might not. Uh, some people also really like the the idea of being the one who's in charge of penetration, whether they, they are usually the penetrator or not. And for people who already have penises attached, the idea of strapping it on can also extend the life of penetration of your sexual activity. Because if your penis doesn't have an erection anymore, you can strap it on and still give your partner penetrative pleasure. Mm-hmm. So I wish we would normalize that a bit more. I think yes. there's a lot of pressure to have these everlasting erections that we see in porn. And and then we've got this mismatch in like, oh, well, I can come a million times. And then where is where is that that creativity and like get out your strap on, get out your fingers, get out some other toy. Like, let's keep it going. Well, I think this is an example of, quote unquote, like pegging the system of the patriarchy. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people with penises feel threatened when there's another phallic thing in the mix, as opposed to like, I think it was like. Reed Mahalko back in the day who used to say like that sex toys are like your best wingman, right? Mm. As opposed to like seeing that this is something that can just add to stuff. And like, I love encouraging people who are experiencing like ejaculating before they want to, or Mm -hmm. erectile difficulties to use different kinds of strap-ons. There's even ones that you can put your penis into. So you're also still feeling the pleasure of it. Um, to help, you know, to take off the pressure, to go longer, to go further, um, to try on different sizes and shapes, to, to go where, to go where no one's gone before, you know, what all these kinds (laughs) of fun things like there's so, it's so fun. Yes. Fun. That's, that's exactly it. I mean, if you wanted to double penetrate your partner, strap on two dildos or strap on one and your penis, like there's so many possibilities when we kind of let go of the way things are supposed to be. And we focus more Mm -hmm. on sensations, fantasies, connection. Yeah. And just to like give you listeners, maybe some other ideas, like let's say you're with somebody who has some back pain or can't thrust, um, or you're like with somebody who, you know, 
can't get an erection at all or whatever. Like you can strap on something to their leg and like ride it while looking at each other and playing with them in another way. Or like I have a lot of clients who experience pelvic pain and they maybe don't, they like to feel more in charge of how deep something is going. And so they can strap this onto someone's leg and like do it at their pace and at their speed with something that's smaller than their partner's penis. If that their partner's penis hurts them too much while they're working Mm. on their pelvic floor therapy. Like there are so many cool options for this. Like everyone should strap it on. And also like, I have to say that I feel like strapping it on helped me understand misogyny. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Because as soon as I put one on, I was like, I could fuck shit up. Oh yeah. Like I felt this immense, I don't know how you feel, but I felt this immense amount of like power. And I was like, I could put this anywhere I want and I could do whatever I want. And I wanted to just like pee on things. And I was like, (laughs) whoa, this is like fucking like, this is intense. This is real. (laughs) I love that, that your energy was, I want to pee on things. I think (laughs) I just was like, I don't know. I felt really powerful. I was like, I could do whatever I want, which is like very toxic. But there was something about having this like dangling thing that made me feel like I could have anything I wanted. Yes. Yes. I I do identify with that. I used to put it on and just like take difficult phone calls. Like if I had to call my cell phone company (laughs) or like, uh, so this is another reason to strap it on, not even for sex, just gain confidence. Yes. 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 Do a little helicopter dick in front of the mirror. You're good. (laughs) Yeah. And that's also like part of like, how crazy is it that just the feeling of having that makes us feel powerful based on what we associate with having a penis. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's so many misgivings around being the receiver and thinking that somehow that defaults to the weaker or the more submissive partner. But really, you can Mm -hmm. have a a strap on play without any of those feelings. It can be about just, oh, let's just switch up who's giving, who's receiving. And that's all. Yeah, I mean, I think this is like a whole episode in and of itself. But like, why is it hard for people to feel like receiving doesn't have to be associated with submissive. Mm, yeah, that's a big topic. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. <laughs> Where do we start? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I know for me, I thought that um, receiving, because of all the messages that I got as a, an AFAB person growing up is... And can you, know, you, define, can you define AFAB for folks? Oh, I'm so sorry. Women? Yes. So AFAB is assigned female at birth. So someone mm-hmm. who identifies with, um, or someone, and so I still identify with the gender I was assigned at birth. And so for anyone with a, with a vulva, like most of us have grown up uh, really understanding our sexual as in service of other people. And so we are the receivers. We are, we don't have a lot of information about our actual pleasure anatomy and what we're told sex is actually doesn't really match a lot of yeah, what our sex our is. Yeah, sex is just something that's done, done to us and to you. collaborate. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it actually steps outside of what we're told are these like feminine rewards that we would get if we behave in a particular way during sex. If we step outside yeah. of that, you're a slut, you're a whore, you're like all of these things that are considered undesirable desirable in society. So I think some of us are doing it with this, uh, you know, desire to belong and and really want to feel attractive and really want to feel that we are pleasing our partners and serving, especially if we're sleeping with masculine people or cis men. That's, that's definitely a pattern that can play out super easy. Yeah. Well, just to get to the logistics, if you're listening to this and you're like, I want to strap it on. Where yeah. does one start? <laughs> yes, yes. So my rule is the person who wants to strap it on is the person that's going to choose the harness. And so there's so many different types of harnesses. There's brief style, there's strappy harnesses, you know, there's all there's all we talked about different parts of the body that can host harnesses. And then the person that is going to be receiving, they get to choose the dildo. And so whether you're using strap on play for vaginal or anal penetration, the dildos are going to be different or or mouth or mouth. Yes, yes. Yeah. Want to give a good strap on BJ? That's so hot. So hot. Yes, I know. That's why I said it because I was like, that's hot. <laughs> so, and, so if you're sucking it, you also get to choose the, the, the dildo. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think there's, there's a lot to, to do in even just talking about the fantasy. So talk about, you know, what's hot about it for you. And people will say, well, I just like, I want to take it. I want to strap it on. Okay. Well, what position are you in? How do you think your partner's feeling as they're giving it to you? How are you feeling as you're taking it and getting into those, those nitty gritties of describing and storytelling your fantasy gives you more juice 
to work with, right? It makes the little bit of awkwardness of learning new equipment, learning a new activity. There's a, there's a backdrop to that. There's a scene to that. And I also think expecting the first time to just be silly and playful is a, a really good bar to set because you might not get it in. The harness might slip. You might not mm-hmm. do what the thrusting that you want to do. Thrusting's hard work if you've never thrusted. Yeah. So yeah, any, <laughs> any tips on getting more fit if you are thrusting for the first time? <laughs> Yes. So I have a a playlist and um, I think I called it goddess groove or something. Please send it to me so I can put it in the show notes. Oh my gosh, I will. I will. And I put on any music that makes me feel like I want to gyrate. And then I put on mm-hmm. my harness and I actually just kneel down in front of the mirror and because my back, my back is kind of bad, but and I'll kneel down and just really watch my body move and appreciate that thrusting looks good and feels good for me too. So we mm-hmm. want to be able to embody the sexiness in what we're doing as much as the sexiness in what we're, we're giving. Um, and that can kind of help you play too, that it doesn't have to look like pound, 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 like porn, you know? You know, there's there's things that you're going to do that's going to be more centered on how you're feeling and then a little bit more centered on how they're feeling and what, whatever they want in that moment. Yeah. I mean, you can probably speak more to this and I would invite people to go like buy and take your very like affordable, amazing classes um, Thank you. and or check out like B-Vibe stuff too. But like maybe don't go straight to strap on play if you've never played with hands yet. Mm, very good point. Yes, you got to have a, my class is called seducing the butt. And yes, <laughs> tell <laughs> us how to seduce the butt. So the, the booty hole likes to be seduced. You know, she wants some breadcrumbs. She wants like teas. And the reason is, is because, so I should put uh, a French loaf in my <laughs> asshole. Is that what you're saying? Yes, or like a little charcuterie <laughs> board, you know, something like, yeah. yeah. One of those little tiny, little tiny, like uh, gherkins. That's such a weird one. Oh my gosh. Those You're going to in the emergency room with Birkins up your butt. And I'm going to yeah, be please like, don't, please, please, please know this is a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> don't put actual charcuterie boards in your asshole. Thank you. Yes, no. Without a base, without a trace. So you've got to have a flared base on whatever you yes. put up your butt. <laughs> There you have it. That was good, huh? Preview from Sluts and Scholars, another awesome show from the Pleasure Podcast Network. Hear more Sluts and Scholars wherever you get your podcasts or at slutsandscholars.com.